Uh, tonight we have a very interesting speaker, uh, Dr. Jerry Teplitz, and the program has to do with increasing your professional power to new levels of excellence. Now whenever I hear excellence, I think of um, uh, one of JFK's last press conferences about almost exactly three weeks before he died. And he was asked, uh, one, uh, whether he liked being president and whether he was happy. And uh, he answered it this way, and I think it, it reminds me of, of the first time I, I, I met Jerry Teplitz at, a, at a, a program at the New York Society of Association Executives where it was pretty much you know, the same thing about improving your professional power to new levels of ex excellence. So when I, I think of Jerry, I think of uh, JFK's quote at this press conference. He said, as far as the job of president goes, I wish I could do my JFK, but I can't. The voice is just not there. As far as the job of president goes, it is rewarding. And I have given before to the press the definition of happiness of the Greeks. And I will define it again. It is the full use of your powers along lines of excellence. I find, therefore, that the presidency provides me with some happiness. <laughs> but I, I never forgot those words. I, I, I have a collection of the press conferences. The full use of your powers along lines of excellence. So um, uh, Dr. Teplitz, or Jerry as he likes to be called, um, he uh, has a PhD. Uh, in holistic health sciences. He was also an attorney, a consultant and speaker at over 1,700 meetings before such groups as the National Association of Home Builders, the Association of General Contractors, many state and local general contracting and home building groups, as well as other business groups. He is the author of Switched On Selling and Switched On Networking, both bestsellers on Amazon. Other books he has authored includes Managing Your Stress in Difficult Times, I've got to get that book, and Switched on Living, and Brain Gym for Business. His clients have included the Association of General Contractors of America, the National Association of Realtors, the Maryland Association of Realtors, and the NHB, the Home Builders Association. So without further ado, because he's got a lot to say, he's going to cram it all in about 45 minutes, uh, please give a warm welcome to, I think, a very, what, uh, what I, I'm sure you will find to be, a very unique, inspirational, wonderful speaker, Dr. Jerry Teplitz. He's got a cold, so, so good evening and welcome to the program of increasing your professional power and your levels of excellence. I want to start with a question. How many of you have ever had a negative day at work? Yeah. Raise your hands. How did you feel at the end of the negative day? Anybody? Negative, tired, drained, exhausted. Would everybody agree that those are good descriptive terms? Now, how many of you have ever had a day at work that was a very positive one that just clicked? Raise your hands. For some of you in the back of the room, let me rephrase this. How many had a moment at work that was positive? On the positive day, how did you feel at the end of that one? Anybody? Exhilarated, energized. Exhilarated, energized. Whatever you agree that that's also good descriptive terms. See, it's very real. Negative disaster days are actually physically, you're mentally, you're emotionally, you're drained and exhausted. Positive days, you're energized. What if you could actually create every day to be a positive day for yourself? Let's not push it that far. What about the last four hours? Last four hours of a disaster day, how effective are you getting things done, accomplishing what, like what you'd like to see happen, and what's the answer? It's not a pretty sight out there. What about last four hours of a very positive day? Doesn't all of that switch? Because you have the energy to bring to the experience. The session this evening is going to be about your personal energy system, how it operates, and what can you do to make at least the last four hours of your day be very positive. Now you've got handouts, the top sheet says action ideas. If you could get a good idea, that's where you can write it down. Let's go to the first page in. So there are three areas we run into stress, we run into conflict in our lives. 
The first part at the very top is an intrapersonal part that's me versus me. Can I make a decision to do something? You felt very strongly about it. But then in the back of your mind, you start hearing a little voice going. That voice starts to go, but, ought to, must, should. And so you're in conflict. And all that conflict, conflict is right inside yourself. And attached to that conflict is some stress. Second part is an interpersonal part that's you versus me. Did you ever ask somebody to do something? When you came back later, they either did it completely wrong or they didn't do it at all. Anybody experience that one? Yeah, we all have at times. You have to take the time to verbalize it directly with that person. You're going to be in direct conflict with them. If you keep it inside yourself, it's called, gotcha anyway. You're now back in interpersonal conflict. That's where you toss them and turn your night. What keeps running through your mind, what I really should have said to that person today was, that is inter, turn back into intrapersonal conflict. You got stressed in both of those areas. Third part is personal function. That's me versus work. Those are all those rules and regulations that say you need to do it this way. You know, there's an easier way, better way, more effective way to do something, but you stop doing it a certain way because somebody else said you, you got to do it this way. Again, some more stress and conflict. So low levels, that's simply what we call a stress and conflict. At higher levels, we call it other things. We call it things like hostility, frustration, anger, disappointment, and depression. And at various times, you've all experienced elements of that. Now take a look at the bottom of the slide where it says energy drainers with the triangles pointing downward. It takes three times the amount of energy for you to deal with these negative situations as it does with positive ones. That's that disaster day where you're physically, you're mentally, you're emotionally, you're drained and exhausted versus the positive day where you're energized. So we're going to be looking at what can you do to make at least the last four hours of every day be very positive for yourself. And the way I'm going to go about that is by sharing with you a technology that's called BK, Behavioral Kinesiology. What kinesiology is, is muscle checking of the body. Everything around us affects us. If, by the way, I don't have all the slides duplicated in the handout, but I'll tell you at the end of the program how you can go on my website to get all of the slides. So what kinesiology is, is muscle checking of the body. Everything around us affects us. Its effect is very direct, very immediate, and very dramatic. What you're going to see me do in a moment up here, it's going to look like a trick. It's going to look like a magic act. You're going to be saying to yourself, this is impossible, it can't be, it's totally real, and I'll explain a little bit what's happening and taking place. Now, to assist me in this part of the program, I need three of you to come up as volunteers. I need two of the men and one of the women. Pick yourselves first three up with me. So we got a woman coming up, we got a guy coming up, we need one more guy. Okay, so Ben, this, you pick one of the other guys, just point to one guy. Okay, and hands to the chairs up there. Now, what you can see me do is to look like a trick, a magic deck is totally real. I'll be explaining in a few minutes what's actually taking place. Now, in terms of what we normally look at and perceive, how different it can be and still be, can we really you can see it? Okay. So let me show you this slide. I'm going to show you what you normally look at, how different it can be and still be real. So on this slide, how many smokestacks do you see up there? Anybody? Three. How many you see at the bottom? Anybody? Four. This artifact is able to create on paper three at the top and four at the bottom. How would you get, like to get hired to put that structure up? You start with four, get the three, you don't know how to do it, we're going to break you with something. On paper, this does exist. What you're going to see me do in a moment is going to look to you as it's three at the top, four at the bottom. It looks like it's impossible. It's as real as that slide. Let me find out who my volunteers are. Your name is? Uh, Joey Dillon. Joey and? Joyce. Joyce and? Silvio Sola. And Silvio. Okay, what you three are going to do is you're going to be sitting in front of me, facing them. You're going to stick your strongest arm out, thumb turn downward. I'm pressing down, you're pushing up when I say resist. Joey, let's start with you. So in front of me, facing, no, right there. <laughs> Can't get away, okay? Okay, so facing them. Strongest arm out, thumb turn downward. Thumb down. You're pushing up, I'm pushing down, ready, resist. Okay, put your arm down. You felt that as a hard pressure, correct? Yeah. 
Oh, by the way, that's as hard as the lines get to know, Joey. <laughs> now, how many of you have heard of acupuncture? Raise your hands. Okay, how many of you have heard the acupuncture meridian line concept? The meridian lines, raise your hands. Some of you. For those who are not, when an acupuncturist takes a needle and puts it into a person's body, oh, we're not going to do that tonight, Joey. Oh, when they do that, we're attempting to stimulate an energy line that runs through the body that is called a meridian line. I want to demonstrate that these energy lines or meridian lines exist. It's going to look like a trick. I'll explain in a minute what I do. All I'm doing, Joey, I'm take my fingers by his eye. I'm going to run, you face, face them. I'm going to run straight down the same side of the body of the foot once, not even touching all the way down once. Arm out, thumb down, Joey. You're pushing up, I'm pushing down. Ready, resist. Come on, Joey. Ready, resist. Come on, guy. Ready, resist. Now, I don't want to leave him this way. Let's put him back. <laughs> put him back to the eye. Arm out, thumb down. Ready, resist. Wow. And Joey, you felt that it's the same degree of heart pressure as the first time. Absolutely. I'll explain to him what's happening to be seated. Oh my God. Wow. So enjoy strong arm out, turn downward. Or you're pushing up, I'm pushing down. Ready, resist. God, you're stronger than Joey. <laughs> now, Joey, you felt that as a heart pressure, correct? Yes. So what I want to demonstrate on Joyce, I'm going to take my fingers by her arm. I'm going to run right across to the belly button once, not even touching the body. Arm to the belly button once across, not touching. Arm out, thumb down, you're pushing up, I'm pushing down. Ready, resist. Come on, ready, resist. Come on, Joyce, help me out. Now, I don't want to leave her. Well, how many of you want me to leave her this way? <laughs> no. Oh, no, okay, we'll get her back. We'll put her back with a massage, actually touching the body, massaging from by the arm across the belly button. Arm out, thumb down. Ready, resist. And Joyce, you felt that as the same degree of hard pressure as the first time. Again, I'll explain it when it's happening. You can be seated. Sylvia, come on. He comes up with great reluctance. <laughs> arm out, thumb down. You're pushing up, thumb down. You're pushing up, I'm pushing down, ready, resist. Okay, you're on that, you felt that as a hard pressure? It's all right. No, I'm gonna press harder. Okay, arm out, ready, resist. That's hard, right? It was okay. okay. Now, what I want to demonstrate now is the power of the mind, the power of positive thinking. How many of you, bottom line, really, really believe in the power of positive thinking? Raise your hands. Super, I want to show you, it absolutely does exist. The kinds of thoughts that you have have a very direct, a very immediate effect on your entire energy system. So, Sylvia, have you had, have had a negative day at work? Yes. Okay, so I want you to pick a day or situation negative. I want you to close your eyes and shake it when you have that thought focus. Shake your head, I'm going to muscle check your arm again. So, arm out again, Sylvia. Shake it when you have that negative. Got it? Ready, resist. <laughs> You're right, it was a disaster on that day. <laughs> now, if you have had a day that's very positive at work, yes. Okay, pick a day or situation, close your eyes, shake it when you have that, I'll check you again. Arm out, shake it when you have it, and I'll check you. Got it? Ready, resist. This time, Sylvia, what I want you to do is I want you to go back to that same negative situation. And what I want you to do is I want you to switch it in your mind and view it positively. Find something about it to view positively, even if it's just Thank God, I'm glad it's over with. Close your eyes, shake and have it switched, and I'll check you. Got it? Ready, resist. Let me see you up here. Let me explain what's been happening up here so far. On Joey, I ran from his eye to the foot without even touching the body, and I weakened what's known as the stomach acupuncture meridian line. His arm came down. I ran from the foot back to the eye. I restrained it the stomach meridian line, his arm stayed up. On Joyce, I ran from by the arm across the belly button without touching the body, and I weakened the spleen meridian line, and her arm came down. I did the massage across, and I strengthened it, and her arm stayed up. And then on Sylvia, you just saw the power of positive thinking. When you walk around thinking a negative thought, guess who you're affected? Yourself. You wind up thinking negative thoughts all day long. That's what you do to your energy system all day long. 
And if you know people are negative all the time, don't be surprised if they get physically ill quite frequently. What they're doing to their entire energy system, they leave it in a very weak, very susceptible state, and literally in walks an illness. There's actually medical research documenting that, where they've found the immunological system of the body is affected by our thoughts. Negative thoughts suppressed by corpus accounts and the chemicals protect us from disease and illness. Positive thoughts do the exact opposite. Increase white corpus accounts and increase the chemicals to protect us from disease and illness. There's even been research that's been done on comparing optimists versus pessimists. One of the first studies done in this area tracked a class of Harvard graduates through their entire lifespan. The people who live longer, stayed healthy, enjoyed life the most were the optimists versus the pessimists. They found optimists have three times less hypertension than pessimists, and the most positive optimists have the lowest level of blood pressure. They found optimists had 50% less cardiovascular disease than pessimists, and if an optimist did have heart disease, over a 15-year period, their survival rate was 30% greater than a pessimist. And if an optimist had to go for bypass surgery, they were 50% less likely to have to go back in a second time. Now, how many of you manage other folks? Raise your hand if you do manage other folks. You folks are the top of the triangle. The people that you manage are everybody under you in that triangle. If you view your job negatively, that's actually the message you send out to everybody. You're creating stress for yourself, and then and you're reducing productivity, creativity, and effectiveness. If you view your job positively, a completely different message goes down. You're actually reducing yours and their stress. You're increasing productivity, creativity, and effectiveness. Now, the very last thing that Silvio did is he changed his mind. He took that same negative situation, he changed his viewpoint of it, and he changed its impact on himself. We have the power to choose every moment of the day our responses. We can choose to view things negatively. What I'm also suggesting is we can choose to view them positively, and we can make this decision as instantly as Silvio did up here. Now, there was even research that looked at the impact of a bad boss. This was a study published in the Journal of Occupational Environmental Medicine. It was a 10-year study done in Stockholm, Sweden. <coughs> Beginning of the study, they had 3,000 men, all in good health, average age was 42. They had all the men rate their bosses on 10 behavior measures. This is an example of one of them. My boss gives me the information I need. Either they, they would be rated very highly, all the way down to very poorly. All of this 10-year period, 74 of these men had either a heart attack or a cardiac event. Here's the interesting piece. The boss with the lower leadership score moved the worker's risk higher for heart attack or cardiac event, and the longer that that person worked for the same boss, the higher their risk went. You're not just affecting your employees that you're managing today, you're affecting their life. Now, the very last thing that Silvio did is he changed his mind. He took that same negative situation, he changed his viewpoint of it, and he changed its impact on himself. We have the power to choose every moment of the day our responses. We can choose to view things negatively. What I'm also suggesting is we can choose to view them positively, and we can make that decision instantly as Silvio did up here. Now, I recognize some of you are sitting there saying, self, this is a trick, that what I'm really doing is just pressing harder one time versus another, just the pressure difference, or it's psychological, the power of suggestion, or I'm doing something with their shoulder here when I put the hand on the shoulder. I know that's running through your minds. To get over that, what I'm going to do in a moment is, is have you self-validate this for yourself. What you're going to do in a moment, you're going to stand up and you're going to face a partner. It's easier to do this checking when you're facing each other. I'm behind the people up here because it's easy to watch what I'm doing, but it's actually easy to do when you're facing each other. So stand up, face the partner, and wait for me. I'll take the turn in each other. 
perfect partner so we can back down. I'll meet you back in Okay, partner being checked first. What they're going to be doing in a moment is they'll be sticking their strongest arm out, their thumb turning downward, and all you're attempting to do is to measure their level of resistance. You're not attempting to whack their arm all the way down. If you did, it means you push their ability, don't do it yet, it means you push their ability to resist anything at all. It's a measurement, it's not just brute force. Miss, uh, why don't you work with the guy over there? He doesn't have a partner. So part of being checked first, will now stick their strongest arm out and thumb turn it downward. Partner doing the checking, keep your face neutral, no smile, no frown. Now place one hand on their opposite shoulder that's just for support, it keeps them level. The other hand right by the wrist bone, right by the wrist bone. They're pushing up, you're pushing down, say ready, resist. Now, take your fingers, start by your partner's eye, run straight down the same side of the body, the foot once all the way down, once not even touching. Arm out, thumb down, hand on the shoulder by the wrist, tell them to resist and push it down. Surprise! Put them back, put them back, foot back to the eye. Arm out, thumb down, make sure they're back. Check them, make sure they're back. Now, same partner, same partner, power of positive thinking on the same partner again. Same person, arm out, thumb down, hand on the shoulder, by the wrist. Have that same partner now close their eyes. Think of something sad or somebody that they don't like. Have them shake them when they have that negative thought focus, then tell them to resist and push down. Negative thought. Now, have them think of a very positive thought and close their eyes, shake them have a positive thought focus and check them. And now, negative viewed positively. Switch the negative, view it positively, close your eyes, shake them have it, switch. Negative viewed positively and check. Now let's check your opposite partner. Opposite partner is their strongest arm and thumb turned downward. You place one hand on their opposite shoulder for support. The other hand right by their wrist bone, by the wrist bone. They're pushing up, you're pushing down, say ready, resist. Steady pressure, not a pump. Now this time, take your fingers. Start by your partner's arm by the side of their body where they wear a belt. Run right across the arms and the belly button once across. Don't even touch the body. Arm out, thumb down, hand on the shoulder of the other wrist. Tell them to resist and push down. Now put them back with a massage. Actually touch the body. Massage from by the arm across the belly button and you go ooh. Actually touching, arm out, check them, make sure they're back, make sure they're back. Now, same partner, same partner, power of positive thinking in the work environment. Negative work thought first. Arm out, thumb down, hand on the shoulder, by the wrist, have them close their eyes, think of that negative thought when they have it focused, then tell them to resist and push down. Negative work thought. Now a very positive work thought. Have close your eyes. Give the positive thought focus and check it. Very positive and check it. And now negative view positively. Switch the negative. View it positively. Close your eyes. Shake them out. Switch and check it. Negative view positively and check it. 
and give the partnership to the Central Bank job and be seated.